So let's go ahead and talk through some of the calculations involved for tolerances. For this one, there's an Excel file you can download that has some tables set up for English units, uh, millimeters, metric, and then the standard types of fits between parts that you can have. There are a PDF and then also a blog spot notes that go through some of the concepts. So yeah, the basic idea for this is when you machine parts, it's not perfect, and things change shape with temperature, with pressure. It's not going to be machined perfectly. And so when you have parts that are supposed to fit together, is, is it supposed to you know, slide around like a door hinge? Is it like a shaft that you want a gear on, in which case the gear needs to move with the shaft. They need to not slide around with one another. And it's... Um, the machining costs, so the more precise the part, the more expensive it is to make for tooling. And so there's just, it's really important to get tolerance right, to have parts stay together, how things are connected. You might take an entire class on just connectors and, and how to attach things together. Okay, so let's go ahead and try out some example calculations over here. We'll start with the English tolerance, and that worksheet has one of the tables filled out for you. So given some two pieces that come together, so a shaft, and you're going to put that shaft into the hole, let's say that this is around a diameter of two. So you'll notice that the, the hole is actually going to allow the machinist to be somewhere between two and 2.0012, and then the shaft in this case is actually less than two. So these two parts, they'll never overlap. There's always gonna be a little bit of a gap between them because it's always larger than two and then smaller than two coming into this. So this type of fit is a running sliding. If you look over here at the table, so this is, would be used if you want the two parts to be able to rotate inside of one another versus location transition. It might slide, it might get stuck, and then the forced fit, it will not move. So you have to hammer it in place and there's no rotation, there's no sliding around between parts. So you can see that um, we have this type of fit and let's see where these numbers come from in the table. So let's say you're designing, you know, a door hinge or something that um, you want the parts to move around. And rather than trial and error and trying to figure out, you can look at material properties, thermal expansion coefficients, and, and that kind of thing. Sometimes corrosion of the parts will mess them up, how they come together as well. But it's, it's nice if there's standard tables that you don't have to do all the work yourself. Someone else has figured out how much wiggle room is needed for just a nice sliding fit. So what you're going to do is go through the tables. So let me show you those. The tables in here, you've got the Excel worksheet, the quiz, and then these notes have the tables. Go ahead and download these notes. And then you'll be able to um, rotate them and zoom in and zoom out on these guys. So if you go through the tables and find on the very top of them the correct type of fit, a lot of engineering is looking things up in tables. So run through these tables, find the type of fit that you want. I used a snipping tool to just kind of grab the right one. So this is RC3. So we find RC3 on here, diameter of two. This one, instead of using a decimal place, it's a comma. That's just, it's a convention that's used in different places. So you're gonna scroll through the size of the diameter and find the range that you're your number fits between. So we have a diameter of two, which is in between 1.97 and 3.15. So 
So on this table, we're just going to scroll over from two and down from our RC3 fit. We see we have one column for hole and one for the shaft. And the numbers on here are in thousands of an inch. So this 1.2, positive 1.2 for the hole. So the largest hole that is going to happen is going to be two inches and then we're gonna add two inches to this kind of tolerance. So it could be 2.0012, just a, a, a bit larger than two inches. The other side is zero. So this would be the type of um, tolerance that is only in one direction. So I cannot go smaller than two and I can go a little bit larger than two. For the shaft, you can see these numbers are negative. And so for the shaft size, again, thousands of an inch, but when you add these negative numbers onto it, the size of the shaft is always gonna be smaller than two. So you're gonna take two and it ends up being minus 0 0.0012 or two minus 0 0.0019. So these are the two kind of sizes that things can be. So there's the two different sizes for the hole, and then there's the two different sizes for your shaft. Another interesting thing for these guys is what is the largest gap between them? And what is the closest fit between them? So the, the max clearance What's going to be the largest gap? So if the hole is really big and then it's a skinny little shaft, the gap, that would be the worst case scenario if those parts were kind of on the edge of their tolerance limits. So that would be your clearance. And for allowance, so this is the tightest fit. So if your hole happened to be on the small side, so on the two inch side, and then your shaft ended up being on the large side. The difference between these two guys, so small hole minus large shaft, that would be the tightest fit that you have. And you'll notice that in this case, both of those numbers are positive, which means that this is a running sliding fit. So there's always gonna be a gap between the parts that they can slide around with one another. Okay, the other, kind of things, what's the wiggle room for the hole, so large minus small hole, and then what is the wiggle room for the shaft? So you're looking at just the difference between the large and the small shaft on there. So those are kind of the notes and dimensional tolerances that you would add in parts and think about how things are gonna be connected together, connected on one another. So let's go ahead and go through one more table just from scratch. So let's say we have a diameter of one inch and we have a type of fit of LT2. So we can come over here and say, what is LT? So location transition. What that means is it might be overlapped. It might have a gap between it. It could go either way. So it's right in the middle of running sliding, and a force fit. So we're going to go over to our tables, and we're going to see if we can find a column that says LT2 on it, and then we're going to try and find the right diameter on that. Okay, so I scrolled through this ahead of time, found the table, there we go, class LT2, and then for the size range, we're looking at one inch which is right here between 0.71 and 1.19. So if we scroll in on this, and maybe it would help to snip this and highlight the information we need on here. So here is the size of our hole. So again, we're doing one inch. So we're gonna look at these numbers right here for the hole. And then the shaft, this is going to, and notice one is positive and one is negative on there. And remember that all of those numbers are thousands of an inch. So let's take this back to Excel and just plug in some numbers. 
and figure out the actual sizes of this thing, that if it's not exactly one inch, it's gonna be a little bit larger or smaller. So for the hole, so large versus small. So large, it's gonna be 1.2 thousandths. And then on the smaller side, it would just be one inch. So we're gonna take our diameter and add this tolerance, so that would be the large size of the hole or the small size of the hole. And then for the shaft, we can come over here, one inch, and on one side of this, it's positive 0.4 thousandths of an inch, and on the other side, it is negative. So this is that transition fit that's a little bit different. And if we add those to our diameter, you can see where that takes us. So we're a little bit larger than an inch or we're a little bit smaller than an inch. Okay, so what does that tell us about the maximum distance between parts or the closest fit? So the max distance is the biggest gap between parts. So if you have something where the hole is on the larger size, right, and then the shaft is really small, you can see that that would be the gap between the parts. They would kind of slide around. On the other side, if we have the small size of the hole, and then we have the large size of the shaft. That would be the tightest fit. This is the tightest fit between parts. And you can see one of them is positive. So this is, yeah, positive number means there's a gap. And for this one, we have negative number, and that means that they are overlapped. So there's actually, you have to hammer it in place to form it, and it's not sliding around. So this is, that's what that negative number, those two would actually overlap one another to force them together. So the um, transition, you're, you're transitioning in between something with a gap and something with an overlap for this particular fit. The two different sizes of Hole. So you can see like how much wiggle room do we have for the hole size and then for the shaft as well. So kind of the gap between the largest and the smallest shaft are the other two numbers on that. Okay, so the type of fit, there's the type of fit, the diameter. So you come down the table, find the diameter. And then you're going to enter these numbers thousandths of an inch and see what the range of size of your parts are for this. And then what is the largest gap? The clearance is the largest gap. And then allowance is the smallest, or they might even overlap between parts. So that's the transition. So let's go ahead and transition from the English worksheets, so inches over to millimeters, metric. And these have similar standard fit types that you can see in the table. So running sliding, location clearance, and you can see loose running fit, free running all the way up to force together. And we can look for H9, D9, so in this case, H9D9 would be a free running fit. So let's go ahead and head over to the table, see if we can find H9D9 on the tables. So let's see, I think the metric ones are at the end. Okay, let's see, we said H9D9. And the nice thing about this is instead of having a range of values and you're gonna add things on, 
There's standard sizes, like why design something to be a weird diameter, right? So if you're going to make it in millimeters, make it just straight 10 millimeters. Don't make it 10.157 weird number, right? So you don't add it on. It actually gives you the number straight up. So that is going to be the range of values for your hole in this case, and then this is going to be the range of values for your shaft. So for that Excel file, let me just copy and paste this into there. The hardest part of this is just kind of looking it up in tables, finding the right um, fit. And then you can add your geometric tolerance notes on there to let the machinists know how much wiggle room they have in doing this. So there's the different sizes of your hole and shaft, and the rest of it is the same thing. So there's your hole tolerance, the difference in the large and small hole, shaft tolerance, large and small shaft, the maximum gap between parts, a very big hole, a small shaft, or the tightest fit between parts. And you'll notice that these are both positive numbers. There's always going to be a gap between them. And this type of a fit over here on the tables is the free running fit. So you'll always have a gap between parts. Okay, so try out some metric, try out the English. And that's going to be the tolerance notes on there. And you can also see some examples and a little bit of a discussion on here for error analysis and nothing is perfect. So here's the, it can only be larger than two unilateral form or plus or minus some equal value, or maybe it's larger on one side versus another side. And these are the same things that you can set in DIM style in your AutoCAD.